and this is where I guess where it counts is to me that means that we go over things in great detail but not just the incident itself ultimately whether it's to you or to somebody else because basically it all began in Washington State that is that's where I was living that's where I grew up as a kid and that's where I grew up as a young man and and those kinds of uh, images impulses and behaviors which ultimately led to the violent behavior, you know, occurred, if you will, in Washington State, that the kind of uh, broad understanding that I'm looking for is uh, going to come, you know, uh, during those years I lived in Washington State. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I guess from your standpoint, it was Washington, basically in Washington State where those first crimes, incidences, murders that took place. Well, Let's just do one here. I mean, let's start. Obviously, we got to start somewhere. And I think it might, we might, it's a long shot, it's a pretty long shot, that you might be able to get something out of it. At least some of that so-called tangible uh, evidence that might be of some value not only to you but to others. And maybe a bit of information, even if you don't find anything else, that might be of some value to families. So we'll do, I understand that at the, the Issaquah site, which I could describe to you, uh, would describe to you if you want, there were th three, uh, remains of three individuals found, two identified and one not, because of the, the uh, so few, the kinds of remains that were found were so few and unidentifiable, okay? What do you want? Uh, where this? Description of the site first. How you get there? I mean, you just don't, you just don't make this up. Right? Maybe half a mile, quarter of a mile down this uh, little side road. If you turn, if you kept on flying all the way down. Oh well, Lord knows what, what the little creatures up there did, what the animals would have done. But I think. Well, let's, uh, let me start with one. Okay. Let me start this way. Um, the unidentified remains. Uh, um, this is where I'm a little bit, uh, the, the presence of the officers down here is a little bit unnerving. Uh, some of it, some of this stuff I don't mind talking about because they wouldn't know from Adam, but I can, but names, I, will, I can write it down or I can whisper it to you or whatever. I just don't want the police getting any kind of names at this point. Well, you can, can you hear that? I can hear it, yes. Okay. I just wrote, I just said that the Hawkins girl's head was severed and taken up the road about 25 to 50 yards and buried in a location about 10 yards west of the road on a rocky hillside. Did you hear that? Yeah, but I, not anything you would have found that I know of. If you'd, uh, you would have found it, probably you would have found uh, the damage to the head. The jaw in particular probably broken. But uh, if you'd found that, you would have known who it was. But anyway, I don't know. Is there any reason you're asking that question? Uh, I was <coughs> moving up the alley. Uh, using a, uh, a briefcase and some crutches. And a young woman walked down. I saw, saw her round the, the north end of the block into the alley and stop for a moment and then keep on walking down the alley toward me. And about halfway down the block, I encountered her and asked her to help me carry the briefcase, which she did, and we walked back up the alley. Across the street, turned right on the sidewalk in front of, I think, the, well, a fraternity house on the corner there. 
uh, round at the corner to the left, going north on 47th. Well, midway in the block, there used to be a, you know, one of those parking lots they used to make out of burned down houses in that area. Let's see. We were to the... We were to the car. We And basically, when I reached the car, what happened was I knocked her, knocked her unconscious with the crowbar. Where'd you have that? One? By the car. Oh, outside. Outside and back of the car. Did she see it? No. Okay. No. And then uh, there was some. Some handcuffs there, along with the crowbar. Along with what? The crowbar. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, they handcuffed her and put her in the driver's, I mean, the passenger side of the car and drove away. Was she alive or dead? Yeah. Oh, no, no, she was quite, con not that she was unconscious, but she. Very much alive. One of the things that makes it a little bit, well, among the things that makes it difficult is that uh, at this point she was quite lucid talking about things. About some. <laughs> it's, it's funny, it's, it's fun, not funny, but it's odd the kinds of th things people say in, under those circumstances. And she thought, she said that she thought that she had a Spanish test the next day, and she thought that I had taken her to help tutor me for a Spanish test. Kind of odd. Mm. Odd thing to say. Mm. The long and short of it, I mean, I'm, I'm going to maybe try to make this uh, get there by degrees. The long and short of it was that, that I, again, knocked her unconscious and strangled her and drug her into uh, about 10 yards into the small grove of trees that was there. Were you bringing a cord? Cord? An old, an old piece of, an old piece of rope. Is it something you brought there with you? Yeah. yeah. Something that was in the car. Then I uh, packed the car up. By this time, it was almost dawn. It's just about dawn. Mm -hmm. Sun was coming up, mm -hmm. and I went through my usual. I say usual routine. I went through this routine where I was just absolutely. I would go through this, but on this particular morning, I, I was just absolutely. Again, just shocked, kind of scared to death, shocked, horrified. About, and I went down the road throwing everything that I'd had, the briefcase, out the window, throwing the briefcase, the, 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 the crutches, the rope, the clothes, just tossing them out the window. This was just, I was in a, a sheer state of panic, of just absolute horror, you know. Uh, it's like, at that point in time, it's consciousness of, what has really happened is like you break out of a fever or something. I would, that is. And uh, so I would. I drove north on 90, then not, not northeast on 90. At some point, throwing articles out the window as I went, the articles of clothing, shoes, etc. What? Well, after we got out of the car, initially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I skipped over some stuff there, and we'll have to get back to it sometime. But I don't feel I just it's just too hard for me to talk about right now. Oh, sure. Yeah, I threw away the briefcase and, and the crutches and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the crowbar, everything, the handcuffs, everything. I gotta get mad at myself. Because Two weeks later, because I'd have to go out and buy another pair. I mean, it's not comical, but that's what would happen. 
Well. I mean, Spanish does pretty darn good if you ask me. That's what she said. Unless she was hallucinating. She said her everybody called her George. George? That's what she said. Mm -hmm. Or how about that? She used a safety pin to p because apparently her blue slacks were a bit too big. Mm -hmm. Or uh, that's about all I know. I mean, I mean, I suppose it was this, this, uh, I, you know, I'm sure there are bits and pieces that will come back to me, but there wasn't a lot, you know, obviously there wasn't a lot of conversation, but <laughs> talk about details coming back. I couldn't find one of the shoes, so I thought it was there, but it wasn't. So I went back. This was, a, this was the next day. Got on my bicycle, rode back to that little parking lot. I knew there were police all over the place by that time, but I was kind of n nervous because, and I'll tell you why in a minute, because I had left, and my car had been parked there. So I may have seen it. Now something was found there that might connect me. So I went back to that parking lot, and I found both pierced ear, the, the pierced earrings and the shoe laying in the parking lot at about five in the afternoon. So I surreptitiously gathered them up and rode off. After the police had checked that area? Well, you can tell me. I'd, I'd seen them, I'd seen whole streams of them driving around all over the place, but they were concentrating on places like uh, the park, uh, mm -hmm. nearby park. I don't know if, I don't, uh, I'll bet you, they couldn't have looked in that parking lot and missed the, the patent leather, white patent leather clog and the two white pierced earrings, hoops 